New research shows that more than 90% of the U.S. could eat food grown or raised within 100 miles of their homes. Using data from a farmland mapping project funded by the National Science Foundation, UC Merced professor Elliot Campbell mapped the potential of every American city to obtain food locally. His model simulated land availability from the years 1850 through 2000 and account for things such as range of diets, food waste, population, and croplands. The popularity of farm-to-table has jumped in the past few years as many now flock to farmer's markets to take advantage of homegrown freshness, supporting local farmers they know and trust. While growing populations and suburbanization have caused a decline in local farmland, Campbell found there is still enough land to assure that eating locally doesn't have to be a passing fad, especially in major coastal cities. New York City, for example, could feed just 5% of its population within 50 miles, but up to 30% within 100 miles. The greater Los Angeles area could feed as much as 50% within 100 miles. In some cities, the numbers vary depending on plant or animal-based diets. Campbell says one important aspect of food sustainability is recycling nutrients, water, and energy. He feels that using compost from cities to fertilize our farms would make us less reliant on fossil fuel-based fertilizers. His maps provide a foundation for discovering how recycling could work. The team says that careful planning and policies are needed to protect farmland from development and encourage future local farming. It seems humans aren't the only ones to learn by trial and error. Now robots can too. National Science Foundation funded researchers at UC Berkeley have developed algorithms that help a robot learn to master simple motor skills on its own through repetition inspired by human learning. Humans are not programmed from birth to successfully complete routine tasks. Instead, we learn from our life experiences and mistakes, calling upon learning deeply rooted in our nervous system. For this test, the team had a Willow Garage personal robot, too, named Brett, perform a series of tasks, stacking blocks, building a toy plane, and screwing on a water bottle cap. The team did not program the robot with details about its surroundings in order to simulate a constantly changing real-world environment. Without examples to solve the problems, the robot scored each movement that brought it closer to achieving the task and was able to learn which movements worked best through trial and error. The exact same software which encodes how the robot can learn was used to allow the robot to learn all the different tasks given. The team feels these deep learning techniques which enable robots to complete complex tasks from scratch could someday lead to significant advances in robot learning capabilities. Today, some 95% of children in the U.S. play video games. Now researchers have found a way to bring video games into classrooms that's not only educational, but more fun, too. National Science Foundation-funded University of Wisconsin-Madison researcher Kurt Squire and his team create educational games based on what excites and engages people when playing games. Squire and his team had students test the games, monitoring how players interacted with each other and adjusted the games to make them more engaging, effective tools of learning. Two of the video games, based on fundamental science, challenge players to think like scientists. The first is Citizen Science, a game that lets players explore a virtual landscape and take samples, making observations of a real polluted lake in Wisconsin. Players can also interact with a virtual stakeholder about the problem. The game is designed to foster critical thinking skills, encouraging players to use science to make a difference in the world. The scientific accuracy of this game model has made it ideal for use even in graduate school courses. Duke Forest in Central North Carolina is a little patch of heaven, at least to the researchers flocking here from across the country to collect samples. Running continuously for over five years, this is one of the largest, most collaborative studies of any patch of forest. What makes this site unique are the heat chambers scattered throughout the forest. The site houses a dozen warming chambers. Nine are warmer than the surrounding forest temperature, while the other three are kept at current levels. Scientists collect samples of everything from soil to leaves and ants. They are already gaining insight into how organisms respond to the changing temperature. This National Science Foundation-funded NC State University project has also enabled researchers to identify important features of many species that help them to cope with the warming climate. 
These shifts in temperature could change every aspect of a forest. The team predicts they will be seeing discoveries from this project for years to come. For more information about these stories, visit us at nsf.gov. This is NSF Science Now. I'm Dina Headley.